disturb the server? I'll connect your Animus workstation back to Helix. In theory, if you align the beams to segments of the core, it should solve the problem. But here's where it gets tricky. You have to move the circles in such a way that each segment is powered by a beam. The keyword here is each. One beam and one beam only per core segment, okay? Once everything is lit up properly, the system will reboot. Got it? Give it a shot. Good job. This core wasn't too complex. But rebooting the advanced hardware in the rest of the building will require more work. The assassins would have you believe that Al Mualim was a great mentor who became corrupted with greed. And that he schemed with the Templars to acquire an apple of Eden. I see instead a shrewd and cunning leader. A man who used his best assassin, Altair ibn Lahad, to eliminate his conspirators in order to keep the apple for himself, so that he could use it to enforce world peace. While it must be stated unequivocally that Al Mualim was not a Templar, it is interesting to me that his vision of peace was more in line with Templar philosophy than assassin. In the past, both sides had the same goal, that of peace. Our only difference was how we chose to achieve it. Had Al Mualim not been killed by Altair and allowed to carry out his plan, perhaps we would not be fighting now. It was only after Altair reformed the Brotherhood with its new ideals of free will that the conflict truly escalated and spread across the planet. For if the so-called wise man of the mountain can see things from our point of view, surely the same can be said for other assassins. Following the Great Purge of 2000, William Miles became the de facto leader of the Assassins. A cunning and ruthless strategist, he trained several agents who infiltrated Abstergo, including Clay Kazmarek and Lucy Stillman. In late 2012, I captured William Miles in Cairo and delivered him to Warren Vidic in Rome. Miles' son, Desmond, attacked Abstergo, killed Vidic and Master Templar Daniel Cross. He fled to a first civilization temple in New York. On December 21st, Desmond Miles was killed inside the precursor structure. The grieving William Miles went underground and left the Brotherhood in the hands of Gavin Banks. Banks led a small team across the globe, attempting to rebuild assassin cells. We have confirmed sightings in Kyoto, Moscow, and Paris. Miles resurfaced in late 2013, and we have confirmed his involvement in the infiltration of Abstergo Entertainment Montreal by the assassins Sean Hastings and Rebecca Crane. Both Miles and Banks remain at large. Agent Acosta has tasked the Akashic satellite Plexus to sweep the planet for traces of assassin activities. We have yet to locate them. Nathan Kenway remains a controversial figure for me. I have great respect for him. After all, he was the Grand Master of the Colonial Rite, charged with finding a precursor site. Haytham was cunning and ruthless, but he had a streak of emotional weakness that ultimately triggered his downfall. He lost his father when he was a child, and the British Grand Master Reginald Birch raised him to become a Templar Knight. 
Haytham eventually learned that his father, Edward, had been an assassin. That he chose to stay a Templar, rather than follow in his father's footsteps, indicates to me that he believed he was already on the right path. When Haytham discovered that Birch was the one who murdered his father, he and his sister killed him in revenge. I believe this was the beginning of his downfall. Templars kill for efficiency, not petty emotions. When he discovered that his son Connor was an assassin working against him in the colonies, the same emotional weakness stayed his blade. A pity Connor did not show him the same mercy. Okay, the numbskull is in another animus session, and I have required caffeine. All is right with the world. Good. This isn't really your kind of mission, is it, boss? Every mission is important in its own way. Still, I bet you'd rather be out with the rest of the team, hunting Sean Hastings or something. Wouldn't you? Hell yeah. I want a front row seat for that show. Any word from Sorkin? He's scheduled to update me in... 43 minutes. Good. Can I ask you something? Of course. What's it like, using an Animus? I went through the Animai training program. It felt like the drills we used to do in the UT Jaeger. You never use a normal Animus like this one? To relive your own genetic history? Only once. Really? Who were you? I was a young man. On the Viking raid on Lindsay Farn. 793, northeastern coast of England. Sorry. History, nerd. So, how was it? It was summer. Good sailing weather. The monastery was a center for religious studies, and we crashed into the city like a tidal wave. And? And? We pillaged and burned. They thought we were demons. The details of the memory were so vivid. I lost myself in the bloodlust. I defeated a Saxon, a great warrior, but did not want to kill him. I invited him to join our clan. Ah, Norse adoption rituals. The chance to sail the world with the Vikings. Yes, a chance to see the world as it really is. What happened then? He wept. Then he cried out that God had abandoned his people and that nothing remained but chaos. I felt such pity for him. I killed him without a second thought. After we're done here, are we gonna have to kill the numbskull? We will see. Hey, boss. Calling from Germany? Yes. I am in Essen, searching for an artifact called the Ankh of Isis. Can you tell me anything about it? Give me a minute to fire up my machines here. Okay. Not much. There's an obscure file from the data dump scanner that mentions it. It was allegedly 14th century Germany, where an assassin named 
Lucas Zergberg fought a Templar offshoot called the Brothers of the Cross. <laughs> How original. That's the file that led me to this bland shit pile. Is there anything else? Anything outside of Abstergo official records? Nobody's ever seen the thing. There's all kinds of stories about its history. From Roman Gallia, Egypt during the Middle Ages, and even a cell of modern-day assassins. Oh. And it apparently raises the dead. Is there any evidence to support this? None at all. You know what I think? I think this is bullshit the assassins are spreading around so that people like us waste our valuable time sniffing after it. Smells like a trap. Agreed. Keep an eye out for new information about the Ankh. While it may not lead to an artifact, we may be able to follow the data back to some assassins. You got it, boss. Where are you off to next? Cuba. I'm going to excavate the observatory. All points ready. Begin. Go, go, go! Who are you? Don't you touch her! Oh, for God's sake, restrain him! You, give me the child. Oh, shush now. You're all right. Elena! Calm down, Mr. Berg. I promise you I won't hurt your daughter. Who are you? My name is Warren Vidic. I work for Abstergo Industries. You quit the Uti Yaga Regiment and became a freelance mercenary in order to afford better care for Elena's cystic fibrosis. How is that working out for you? Arkele! I have an offer for you. I don't work for people I don't know. It's not that kind of offer. I'm going to remove an item from my pocket. What is that? This little pill? <laughs> it's actually for her. Go on, little one. Have some medicine. Stop! There now. Isn't that better? <laughs> this pill will cure her. It isn't on the market, but it can be yours if you agree to participate in a little training program I put together. What does Abstergo need with someone like me? Oh, you won't be working for Abstergo. However, if you perform, Abstergo could work for you. I want one thing before I agree. Name it. That one there. He upset my daughter. I understand. Gentlemen, release Mr. Berg. Jenkins, give him your gun. What? Now! Yes, sir. Satisfied? It's a start. Like Haytham Kenway, Daniel Cross came from an assassin bloodline, as the Orlov family had at least two generations who served the Brotherhood. Daniel Cross's history of drug addiction and animus-induced psychosis should not take away from his many accomplishments for the Templar cause. Under the influence of Warren Vidic, he was planted into the Brotherhood and earned their trust, eventually meeting their reclusive mentor. 
Then his subliminal programming activated, and he killed the Mentor, triggering the first great purge of the modern age. Al-Mualim. Haras. Vali Sel Tradat. Baptiste. Duncan Walpole. Hatham Kenway. Lucy Stillman. Daniel Cross. These are but a few prominent examples of something I've always felt. That there will always be assassins who are willing to abandon their cause to serve ours. Yet there is no one who embodies this idea better than Sheikh Cormac. And I want the assassins to confront this painful reality. Do you care to explain what happened in Paris? Gavin Banks led a team of assassins to your laboratory and destroyed it. That lab was supposed to be completely off the grid. How did they find it? Banks is a known associate of Sean Hastings and Rebecca Crane, who have infiltrated Abstergo before. He is also not your typical assassin brawler. He follows information. They found a way to access your Helix servers. Nothing is off the grid anymore. That facility was dedicated to studying the sage we recovered from Montreal last year. If you had informed me of its existence, Sigma team could have protected your interests. Did you engage Banks team? Sorkin and I tracked them from Paris to La Rochelle, where their ship was waiting for them. We fought, but we were outnumbered. Sorkin was stabbed seven times by an assassin we have identified as Galina Voronina. And you let them get away? Let's be very clear. I was trained to hunt and kill assassins. It was you who disbanded my team and sent me on a fool's errand across the surface of the Earth. I warned you this would happen. You know what? I can admit when I'm wrong. You have my permission to reform Sigma team. I need DaCosta back. Impossible. She's still in Montreal. Unacceptable. I've apologized for my oversight, Berg, but don't push me. The fact is, we need to find new sages. Alvero Grammatica tells me that Melanie LeMay has a few promising leads in Montreal. When will DaCosta be finished? She's ahead of schedule on security upgrades and firewalls, but Helix is a target for assassins, Erudito, and the first civilization consciousness. So, there have been some setbacks. Is the building physically secure? There's security on site. Send me there. Oh? I thought you were too good to be wasted on such trivial matters. I wanted to cast her back on my team, and if that building is a target, I need to make sure she's looked after. I will also improve their security in my own way. Very well, I'll start preparing the necessary documents. Like DaCosta, you'll be a consultant from Abstergo Industries, there to help bring them up to speed on some new policies. In the meantime, send some extra agents to Paris. I suspect there may still be assassins lurking there. Francois Macandal saved Baptiste from slavery and inducted him into his so-called brotherhood. Macandal was a vicious mentor, and in his desperate attempt to liberate slaves, he broke his own creed by indiscriminately killing nobles. Misguided as they are, some assassins are honorable. Macandal was not one of them. 
Thanks to the calculating genius of Madeleine de Lille, the Templars made an example of Magandal by way of public execution in 1758. His pathetic excuse for a brotherhood quickly fell apart. When his comrade and childhood friend Agathe fled to Louisiana, Baptiste saw the futility of his former life in Macandal's brotherhood. Madeleine saw Baptiste's potential and instructed her Templars in New Orleans to strike a deal with him. If he could draw Agathe out of hiding and eliminate him, he would be granted a place in the Templar order. Although Baptiste was killed by the assassin Aveline de Grandpré, his path clearly demonstrates the inherent superiority of Templar ideals over assassin terrorism. The first civilization entity known as Juno re-emerged from the Grand Temple in New York in December 2012. Although no longer a corporeal being, she exists as a kind of digital consciousness somewhere in the Abstergo cloud. To accomplish her goals in the real world, Juno uses two types of people. The first is another precursor consciousness that emerges in a human being at random. This person is commonly known as a sage. Juno also holds sway over a group of disciples called the Instruments of the First Will, who believe it is humanity's natural role to serve the first civilization. Abstergo is currently using the First Will as a cheap and hands-off way of acquiring pieces of Eden and other relics. However, I suspect that the reverse is also true, that they are using our resources to locate objects that will help them further their own goals. I do not trust them, but for now, all I can do is have Da Costa monitor their activities. Juno's motives are unclear. Although she has made one attempt to possess a corporeal body, she appears to be more powerful as a digital entity. Agent Da Costa fears that should humanity ever achieve singularity, a fusion of humanity and machines, Juno would become unstoppable. Ironically, it is Abstergo itself which is driving civilization in that direction. Given the nature of our current investigation, I have been looking at other assassins who, despite themselves, have helped the Templar cause. The first is Clay Kazmarek, who infiltrated Warren Vidic's Animus Project in Rome. He became the project's Subject 16. 
Kazmarek's rich ancestry helped Vidic to identify the Renaissance assassin Ezio Auditori as a person of interest. Driven mad by overexposure to the Animus, he committed suicide. However, Kazmarek may have unexpectedly become useful again. While in the Animus, Subject 16 came into contact with the first civilization entity known as Juno. Perhaps studying his bizarre Animus experiences can help us find a way to deal with the looming threat Juno promises. With Subject 16 out of the picture, Vidic needed a replacement. Desmond Miles, a runaway assassin, was captured in September 2012 and was used as Animus Subject 17 to further the search for an Apple of Eden. He managed to escape and uncovered an imminent threat to the planet. A solar flare similar to the one that wiped out the precursor race over 75,000 years ago. Desmond Miles also reactivated a first civilization temple in New York and used it to save the world, but it cost him his life. Abstergo recovered his body. In death, Desmond Miles became Sample 17, and his valuable genetic data was uploaded to the cloud servers in order to benefit all branches of Abstergo. Whether they live or die, we must continue to find ways to make the assassins work for us. It is 426 on December 13, 2012. Debriefing of Sigma Team's Cairo operation. Debriefing conducted by Abstergo Psychiatrist Tibor Hashek, Level 7, and Director of Operations Leticia England, Level 9. State your name and rank for the record. Juhani Otzoberg, Service Number OP114-8506-B, Master Templar. How would you classify the result of your Cairo mission, Master Berg? I would call it a complete success. The new Sigma team performed admirably. That's going a bit far, don't you think? The target William Miles was apprehended and the first civilization artifact was retrieved. Both were handed off to Warren Vidic without incident. May I ask how you would rate the mission? We're pleased with the results, but not with the methods with which you achieved them. I see. May I ask why? You went off mission. You were supposed to apprehend the target at the airport, not at the museum. When the target emerged from the plane, he was posing as a tour guide for a class of high school students on a field trip. A member of Sigma team informed us you aborted the mission then and there. I will not deny this, but tell me, who talked? I cannot reveal that. No matter, I will find out on my own. Back to business. The target was very smart, but also very sloppy. Explain. The target possessed advanced counter-surveillance techniques, but lacked the skill to implement them properly. The target was trained as an assassin since birth. I am aware. However, it has been many years since he was an active field agent. He must have been very desperate to go himself, as these days he is more of a talker. A puppet master. And what are you? A predator. A predator who defied orders because of the presence of some schoolgirls. I prefer to think of myself as one who can choose the most opportune time to strike. The last time I followed orders to the letter was in Florence. That did not end well for anyone. Was it that, or did the students perhaps remind you of your daughter? I separate my work and personal life completely. Your daughter's recovery has been remarkable. I do hope her progress continues. Please, don't. I beg your pardon. I find your attempt to threaten my child vulgar and unnecessary. Explain. 
Abstergo's pharmaceuticals have given my child a chance at a life free from pain. And I have at last found what I believe to be my calling in life. And for that, we expect obedience. For that you have my loyalty. The involvement of the children in Egypt compromised the original mission. Nothing more. We already have one Master Templar that we can barely control. I don't like the idea of having two loose cannons out there. With all due respect to Master Cross, while he is gifted, he is mentally disturbed. We mean no disrespect, but after losing your team in Florence, we felt a need to keep a close eye on you. I achieved all mission objectives, and achieved them without bloodshed. So my only question for you is, am I in command of Sigma Team or not? As you said, the results were impeccable. Then I believe this meeting to be at an end. I request permission to leave. Do you have something more important to do? I am going to find out who among my team talked to you. I will not tolerate that kind of insubordination. I think we can stop here. The briefing ended at 4.34. Transcript to be sent to Alan Rickin for security clearance. Otso Berg, the big star of the Anime Training Program. Show me what you've got, you arrogant prick. If you insist, Master Cross. I believe that my training will soon be complete. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> What's so funny? I was wrong about you. You're not arrogant. You're just deeply fucking stupid. Oh! Your body, your mind, they're not yours anymore. You understand? All you have left are the voices. I don't suffer from your condition. My animus sessions were carefully- No, no, no! My voices are ghosts! Dead! So they can only ever say the same things over and over and over and over! But the ones in your head will never die. And they own you now. I am the Order's humble servant. You're not even a person anymore. You're a tool. A weapon. A plaything. We're done here. And in the glorious New World Order, there won't be any room for broken toys like us! Duncan Walpole rose to the ranks to become a master assassin. But he was restricted by a brotherhood which chose to send him across the ocean to the West Indies, rather than find a way to nurture his potential. Once there, Duncan attracted the notice of Loriano Torres, former governor of Cuba and Templar Grand Master. Through their correspondence, Torres offered a less violent way to achieve their mutual goals by using precursor artifacts as a surveillance system rather than the murders and scheming favored by the Brotherhood. Sadly, 
Duncan was killed by a pirate before the Templars could help him achieve his potential. Although Duncan's story does not have a happy ending, it clearly demonstrates that the Templars' highest goals of peace and order need not exclude personal success and achievement. Sean Hastings was a university professor whose hobby was leaking Abstergo secrets. He was hours away from being killed by Abstergo when he was saved by Rebecca Crane, an assassin hacker. Since then, the pair have been inseparable, providing technical support for assassin field agents. Hastings and Crane infiltrated Abstergo Entertainment Montreal in late 2013, and were responsible for the theft of classified information. It is unclear if they planted the virus currently affecting the Helix servers, or if they merely left the door open for other hackers to exploit. Rebecca Crane's skills are not to be underestimated. She created the Animus 2.0, an assassin version of Warren Vidic's original machine. It appears that she was also largely responsible for establishing a new, more secure assassin network. It would seem Crane and Hastings have been promoted within the Brotherhood. There are rumors that they are now leading some kind of hacker collective known as the Initiates, and attempting to lure them to the assassin side. The box is live. Sorkin's picking off the stragglers as they escape. Good. Proceed to stage two. All points, the word is given. Stage two is a go. I repeat, stage two is a go. Get those doors down. Three, two. Adriano Maestranzi. I have come for you. What's he holding? Vittoria Agri Assassini. Bomb! Sigma team, anyone, do you copy?
This is a priority message to all Sigma Team operatives. Assassins have stolen an artifact from a Rotterdam storage facility. Rally point is at 51.887107 by 4.559017. Be there at 0600 local time. Stragglers will be put to death, so move it. Listen up, losers. There are two confirmed assassins operating in the city. Target number one is Harlan Cunningham, the only survivor of a cell in Florence that our fearless leader eradicated a couple of years back. He stole the precursor box and is on the run. Target number two has been identified as Aaron Shoot, former MMA champion, and now Cunningham's disciple and lover. How romantic. He's running interference, murdering our Templar agents embedded in Abstergo facilities throughout the city. Sorkin, take Sigma team and go after Shoot. I will take down Cunningham myself and recover the artifact. I don't like the idea of you going alone, boss. I want to deal with him personally. Sigma team! Maintain contact with Violet at all times. You have your orders. Sorkin, you dipshit! Don't engage him hand to hand! Pull your men back! Come get some! He's got my gun! Sniper one, do you have a shot? Negative. He's using Sorkin as a shield. Apart. Take the shot! Ah! I hit Sorkin. He dropped a smoke bomb. I've lost visual. He's... He's gone. That's our cue. Pick up your sorry asses and get to the extraction point. Double time. <sighs> just... Just fucking kill me already. I had a dream about you. Ah, oh, that's sweet. But I'm with someone. In my dream, you never made it out of Florence alive. What can I say? I'm too stubborn to die. Hello, lover. Hercule! We can't leave the box behind. Fuck that! I killed half the Sigma team. Let's quit while we're ahead. See you in your dreams, Berg. What a shit show. Compile the relevant parts of our audio logs and send them to Letitia England. Tell her this is exactly why she should be letting us hunt assassins. Speak. Why has Violet DaCosta been removed from Sigma Team? I'm reassigning our assets as I see fit to align with the goals of the Phoenix Project. The Phoenix Project? Sigma Team would be of more use hunting down the remaining assassins. Let Delta Team hunt precursor relics instead. Those relics are the key to sequencing first civilization DNA. Accomplishing that goal will in turn make the assassins even less of a threat than they are now. Be that as it may, Agent Acosta should not be wasted on something like Abstergo Entertainment. Last year's fiasco with the Sample 17 project showed me that Abstergo Entertainment is more than just a disposable subsidiary. It's the best resource we have to finding new pieces of Eden. It is a weak link that has been compromised by our enemies time and time again. All the more reason to have Acosta secure their access to the cloud servers. We're confident that Melanie LeMay won't fuck it up. Like Olivier Garneau. 
Bringing a civilian like that into our ranks is also unwise. Time will tell with Miss LeMay, but she handled the John Standish situation with an even hand. She helped us discover the existence of sages, and in doing so, has done more for Phoenix than you have, Mr. Berg. She also continues to ignore the presence of the instruments of the First Will within her operation. Those whack jobs are actually useful to us for now. They're a cheap source of relics we can exploit. If they become too much of a problem, we'll deal with them with the same efficiency we deal with the Assassins. Giving the Assassins time to regroup is a tactical mistake. We should strike them now while they are at their most vulnerable. We value your passion and expertise, Mr. Berg, and your concerns have been noted. Now pack your bags. You've got a busy year ahead of you. Field report, Phoenix Project, November 1st, 2013. Agent DaCosta alerted me to a possible lead on the Koh Inor Diamond. A replica can be found among the crown jewels of England. However, the true diamond is a powerful piece of Eden and has been lost for centuries. Jot Sura is a programmer at Mysore Tech, a company working with Abstergo Entertainment to release a variant of the Animus headset to Asia called the Brahmin device. He's been associating with Siobhan Dami, the sister of Jadseep Dami, a known assassin. Could the Brotherhood be using the Brahmin device to locate the koh -Nur? Until we have more evidence, I have decided to use a local Abstergo strike force rather than mobilize Sigma team. Update, November 3rd, 2013. Jot Sura was abducted outside of Dreamland Studios in Mumbai. He was seen being forced into a van by Shavan and Jadseep Dami. This confirms my suspicions. The assassins must be using Jatsura's genetic memories to locate the Koinor. I have authorized the local Abstergo soldiers to engage and eliminate the assassins, with instructions that the Brahmin device must be kept intact. I am en route to India. Update, November 4th, 2013. I arrived in India too late. Our strike team engaged the assassins in two separate conflicts. The body of Siobhan Dami was found at the first site, but her remains were too badly damaged in an explosion to collect any genetic information. I found the Brahmin device at the second site, but after reviewing the genetic memories recorded within, I am relieved to find that Jatsura's bloodline was a dead end. The real Koinur diamond remains lost to both sides. Jatsib Dami escaped, which means we must monitor this new assassin activity in India closely. I am closing this file and proceeding to my next mission. Details of Harlan T. Cunningham's life were difficult to acquire, as many traces of his identity before becoming an assassin were altered or erased by Gavin Banks. It is only thanks to Agent Acosta's remarkable skills that we are able to piece together this profile. Cunningham was outed as homosexual in high school, which unfortunately ruined a promising wrestling career. 
He left Texas as quickly as he could, and fled to Europe. Cunningham was recruited by the Brotherhood in Florence, Italy, under the leadership of assassin veteran Adriano Maestranzi. Sigma team attacked the Florence hideout in 2012, but Maestranzi detonated a bomb. Three assassins were killed before the explosion, but Sigma team was annihilated in the process. Cunningham and I were the only survivors. Cunningham was last sighted in Rotterdam, alongside Aaron Schutt, a former mixed martial arts champion who also suffered a career backlash when he came out as homosexual. It is clear that Cunningham is mentoring Schutt in the ways of the Brotherhood. Although physically gifted and extremely dangerous, Schutt is a poor choice as an assassin. He is incapable of keeping a low profile and will compromise the Brotherhood despite himself. Recently, Cunningham stole a piece of Eden from an Abstergo facility in Rotterdam. During the operation, Shoot was charged to attack Abstergo employees throughout the city to draw attention away from his mentor. Although Sigma T managed to reclaim the item, both Cunningham and Shoot escaped. I will not allow Cunningham to get away from me a third time. <laughs>